Passover. Christ, our Passover. I will begin by looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 to 8. Therefore, punch out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the cold leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. For those not familiar with um, making of bread, you add yeast to flour, isn't it? And it becomes a leavened bread because it makes it dough to rise. This is just like a sinful life. There is no big sin, there is no little sin. Sin is sin. A little telling of lies is a sin which God does not approve. So, any sin in your life, regardless of how you might hide it, is like the yeast that is added to the bread for it to be a big loaf. The better bread is one without yeast, the unleavened bread. So why the yeast to make it a big loaf of bread? So Paul began by saying to the Jews, the Passover is a feast to be remembered. The Passover was when in one night, in order for God to deliver Israel out of Egypt, despite the resistance of the king at the time, Pharaoh, and since Pharaoh refused to let the people of God go, God decided to send the angel of death to kill the firstborn, all the firstborn, including animals in Egypt at the time. However, in those houses where the blood of lambs, the Passover lambs, was docked like blood coating on the door post. Anyone with this blood coat on his door post will be speared from death. So death passed over them. That is what is referred to as the Passover. <coughs> it was a night to be remembered, not to forget. And God told them in Exodus chapter 12, verses 12 to 14, I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. I will strike off all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And when you hear the word of God this way, you need to fear him. God will do the same, even today, for you and me, if only we will be sincere and truthful with him. He will go to every extent to execute judgment <coughs> on our behalf against the enemy. Haven't you heard the says, who is he that said the thing and come to pass when the Lord himself has not approved it? Haven't you heard when he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm? Verse 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. See? And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. 
This is the Passover that the Jews celebrate even to today. But how does this Passover relate to us so that it can be our own celebration? And that is why we are talking today on Christ, our Passover. <coughs> it was an unblemished, unblemished lamb that was sacrificed that night. Jesus Christ, who did no sin, yet was placed on him the sin of the world. So Jesus Christ now became the prophetic Lamb of God. The same way the Passover lambs were slaughtered and their blood was dumped on the door, doors of the people that believe in God. And the spirit of death could not come to them. They were spared. The same way Jesus Christ became the Lamb of God. And when John saw Jesus Christ, John the Baptist, passing in John chapter 1, 29, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sin of the world. Because that's yet happened at that time. The one who takes away the sin of the world. So at that time, Jesus Christ was preparing to be the Passover lamb. So to the Jews, they celebrate even to today because that was a command of God that they should remember the day to celebrate the day they were delivered by force. And that's how it affects us. That nothing can harm you. Peter said, if you be follower of them that do good, who will harm you? Good will always overcome evil. Amen. Just do what is good. Follow the word of God and follow the scriptures. You will see who will laugh last. Amen. So in Exodus chapter 12, verse 14, Exodus 12, 14, So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Feast means celebration. When the Lord delivered you from death, Will you ever forget? No. When the, the Lord deliver you from those that want to kill you, will you ever forget? No. Every day you will remember. And you will remember not to forget them. So you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. That was what Paul was saying. Not with the feast of hypocrisy. Not with the feast of malice and wickedness. No. But let us keep it with the feast of what? Unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. He said, You shall keep it as a feast by everlasting ornaments. We cannot continue to live in sin for grace to abound. You are now going to fear God. In sincerity and truth. <coughs> then, when God sees the blood, it will pass over you. Amen. And the plague shall not be on you. Amen. He said, The plague shall not be on you to destroy you, says the Lord. Amen. So, the reason why the plague comes is to destroy your life. But when that life has been delivered by the blood of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus is on that man, Paul said, let no man touch me, for I carry the mark of Christ on my body. What you don't know is that every one of us will have the mark of Christ. Those that are in Christ. And that's what paved way for us for deliverance from evil. They can plan whatever they need to plan. The evil one will always plan. But God is always ahead of us. Amen. This is why Christ has become our Passover. So I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Paul said in Romans 1 16. Why? For it is the power of God. Everybody say power of God. Power of God. You want the power of God? Yes. Where is the power of God? In the gospel. the gospel of Christ. 
what you are hearing right now is the good news of Christ. And that is where the power of God is. And that's what the devil doesn't want you to know. He will do everything for you not to study the Bible. Because he knows when you study the Bible, you have the power. So while men slept, the enemy came and planted tears among the roots. You will make it to sleep spiritually. And so you don't have time for the word of God. So if you can rob you of the word of God, it will rob you of the power of God. Paul said, I'm not ashamed. I can go anywhere to tell people I am a child of God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So the youth, find time to study the word of God. It's not to make your life better. For it is the power of God. What is the power of God? The gospel of Christ. To salvation, the power of God to save people. How many people does he save? <laughs> Everyone who believes. Everyone who believes. For the Jew first, obviously. And then the Greek, the rest of us. So the bottom line is the power of God to salvation is for everyone. Everyone who believes. If you will believe today, you too will be saved. Christ our Passover. For God so loved the world. Remember? John 3 16. Because of their sin was so precarious, God loved the world to save them. Pastors loved the world. Doesn't love the world. Doesn't love the world of sin. Doesn't encourage sin. Because of their sinfulness, He loved them to the fact that He wanted to save them. And He did through Christ Jesus. That He gave them, He gave to the world His only begotten Son. That whosoever, whosoever, remember what Paul says, the gospel of Christ is for everyone who believes in He now said, for whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the promise of God to us. And in verse 17 of that same John, it says, for God did not send His Son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. God does not condemn the people. We want to save them. And that's why He sent Jesus to save. Now you hear that now God did not send Jesus into the world in vain, did He? No. He sent Jesus to save the world. You are sent to that world place to save people. You are saved to serve. You are not saved to be a church member. You are saved to be a citizen of the kingdom. Amen. God is not looking for church membership. He's looking for the citizenship of the kingdom. Amen. But whether you like it or not, the king is coming. Amen. To take home the citizens of the kingdom. Amen. So when we are playing church, we think yes, and in church. We're not talking about church. When rapture comes, then two people shall be on the field. One shall disappear. It will be good if he's a member of the church on the wrong. So God did not send Jesus to the world in vain, but he sent Jesus to the world to save, not to condemn the world. You might think you are saved, but we are not yet saved. So, if you are a sinner living in sin, you can only be saved from sin if you believe in Jesus the panacea of the problem of this world is the solution. You heard about that song, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Feeling, but it's not about feeling. 
is about the spirit within you. So the spirit within you to worship God. Yes. You love to worship God. You always love to worship God. The spirit of God in you. See? John chapter 11. Shortly after Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead, verse 47. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees <coughs> gathered a council and said, What shall we do? They held meetings. No. They ganged up. Have people ganged up on you before? No. Yeah. And they ganged up against you. You know? But God will always arrest people, isn't he? So they ganged up against him and said, What shall we do? For this man walk many signs. That is many miracles. Look at verse 48. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him. You see? So people will go to every extent to make sure that no, no one will come to church. They will go to every exercise that you don't believe. They are, they are workers of iniquity. Why will it be on that same day that people want to come to church? That's why they say, let us go and play football. They will do everything. So it's not left for the parent to wise up. Everybody say, wise up. Wise up. <laughs> Stop sleeping. After all, it's my son. It's my daughter. It's not yours. So God has placed me in that position of a steward to bring them up in the way of God. If I don't do it, God will not chastise you. God will chastise me. So if we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him. And they began to plot to kill Jesus. Unbeknownst to them, this was prophetic. Their plotting was prophetic. Yes. Mm -hmm. To kill him was prophetic. Mm -hmm. To get rid of him was prophetic. Was prophetic. Mm -hmm. They were setting the stage for Jesus Christ to be the Passover. Mm -hmm. The Passover Lamb of God. Amen. Yes. Did you get the point of this? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 53 to 54. Then, the critics will not stop. From that day on, they plotted to put him to death. To put him to death. Therefore, Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews. We now have to put Jesus in a protective custody. Because he now left there. He now went to uh, Ephraim to begin to preach the scriptures. The killers were busy looking for the opportunity to kill him, but his time had not come. To everything there is a purpose. To everything there is a season. The preacher said, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. No, I believe in purpose. I believe in purpose. You see, I'm speaking to you today. This is the purpose why I'm here. Then tomorrow, you will see yourself talking the same thing to others. Because that's the purpose why you're there. You are not just working for money. You are sent there for a purpose to save people. So if you forget the primary reason, and you are living your life for the secondary reason, You've lost it. God is speaking for people to promote. Not the people that have their own agenda. But they will run the agenda of God. And then as they are doing it, God will promote them. Verse 57. Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees are given a command. Look at them. What was the command? 
that if anyone knew where he was, can you see? They did not know where he was. God was the protective cost of their best life. If anyone knew where he was, he should report that they might seize him. But Jesus was busy handing over to his disciples in Ephraim, verse 54. Coming to church is not a wasted time, it's a time well spent. Especially a living church where there is sound biblical teaching. In such places, lives are impacted for eternity. There are certain things you have learned since the time you've been coming, even today, that has left you your life and has made will make your life not the same again. You can know if what you are being taught is impacting your life, how you see us notice that you start studying the Bible regularly. Anyone? You start using the word of God to pray. You know, before you just think that uh, prayer is just talk. Said so the kingdom of God is not in words, it's in power, demonstration of power. So it's not just mere talk, it's biblical talk. So you now begin to use the word of God. Remember it. When Jesus Christ pronounced a curse over a victory, the next day, Peter put into remembrance what Jesus Christ said the night before. And Jesus Christ told him, he said, Peter, have faith in God. <laughs> so we have to put in remembrance the word of God. And you can put that into prayer. Then you know that you are a growing believer. Mm -hmm. Daniel, David said in Psalm 119, he said, give me understanding and I shall live. David knew that when I understand the word of God, then I begin to live. I start to live. I start to come alive. That is the beginning of life. As Solomon said to his son, this is the word of Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 4, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Verse 22, for their life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. These are the words of a godly father to his Sons. Same way the word of God to you if you find it. Said so the kingdom of God is like a pearl that somebody saw, isn't it? Sold everything he had to buy it. Remember? The same thing with the word of God. Because heaven and earth will pass, but his word will not fail. So coming to a living church is a time well spent, brothers and sisters. But don't just come, go, you come prepared with your Bibles, come prepared with your writing material as we started too, you can learn something during the week. Don't go to church without your Bible and your writing journal, very important because it's, 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 that's an evidence that you are not making effort to grow in the knowledge of God. People that go to church empty-handed will live empty. In John chapter 12, from verses 1 to 11, the six days before the Passover, you see, the Jews everywhere will celebrate this Passover because this is eternal ordinance that God gave to them. But six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. And those plotting to kill Jesus, they did not only want to kill Jesus this time. Because of Lazarus also, 
that has brought a lot of people to the kingdom of God, they also wanted to kill Lazarus. Because the Bible says, on account of him, Lazarus, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. So verse 12 to 13. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they knew that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out. This is where people began to take branch, palm tree branches on the Palm Sunday like this. And that's why they call it Palm Sunday. <laughs> so it's significant, isn't it? Because they can only do this for a king. And they began to cry out and say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the king of Israel. The majority that believed in him see him as a blessing from God. Is it not? Yeah. It's still a blessing from God. They called him the king of Israel. And they were right, aren't they? Because even David, the king, called him, Jesus, the Lord. So my Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right side until I make your enemies still So who is the real king? Jesus. Are you getting something? Yes. Look at verse 14 to 15. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, called, sat on it as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. So up to this point, brothers and sisters, the disciples that are following Jesus, even then did not understand what was happening. They just saw a lot of people celebrating Jesus. By the time it was done on them, it was after his death and resurrection that they now remembered. They were wondering why are the people rejoicing and paying homage. The same people, the same way people pay homage to the king. But in verse 23 to 25, said the hour has come now. When they, when, when they began to sing praises to him, because at this time, he has already entered Jerusalem. But before then, he knew that his time has not come. But now, that they began to sing, and they began to call him the king of Israel, aha, somebody that is already a king would not like that, isn't it? Aha. So Jesus at this time knew. He said, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified <coughs> to die for the world. That is what his purpose. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, so many a time God wants us to die to self, but we resist him. But it is in dying that you can be brought to life. Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, he was talking prophetically about him dying for the sin of the world and being buried only for him to rise from the dead. Hallelujah. Say, so unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground, and dies, it remains alone, isn't it? Mm. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Don't put yourself first before God. Don't put your job before God. 
Don't put your career before God. Don't put your spouse before God. Don't put your children before God. Don't put anything before God. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God must come first. Jesus did not lived for the moment. He lived on. He came for this purpose to save the world from sin. The dying, the death of Jesus was actually a ransom for our freedom from the power of sin. So when you look at this triumphal entry, triumphal entry of Jesus, the great entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, it's not only the Jews that it's significant for because they see it as the Passover celebration, isn't it? But for us as well, we should see that it's also a Passover for us in the sense that the moment Jesus Christ now acted in that position as a Lamb of God, it not only saved the, 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 the Jews, it saved the world and became the Savior of the world. And so remember that whoever is in Christ Jesus, therefore, is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What does it profit a man when he loses, when he gains the whole world, or loses his soul? The reason why Jesus Christ came is for you not to lose your soul, but to gain. So God is calling you to give your heart to Him. He's calling you to stop living in sin. He's calling you to serve Him. He's calling you to know that that's a day of reckoning for everything that we do. That's a day of reckoning for the things you do, we all do behind closed doors. When I put on garments on the Sunday, but during the week, we don't know what you are in your life. But what is important is, when Jesus Christ comes back the second time, he's going to come to take home his own church. The church without blemish. Therefore, let us celebrate this feast with your leavened bread of sincerity and truth. This is how Christ has truly become our Passover. Let us pray. If our hope is only in this world, we are of all men most miserable. Heaven is our home. Our citizenship is in heaven. But we cannot get there outside of Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Outside of living for him here on earth will not get us a ticket to heaven. Just being a church member will not get you a ticket to heaven. You must grow to be a follower of Christ. You must give your heart to Christ to be a citizen of the kingdom. Nicodemus asked him, What shall I do to inherit this kingdom? Jesus Christ said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Again, he said, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. With every head bow, with every high school, I'm talking to you. Please, Jesus Christ has become our Passover. Just as the Passover lambs were sacrificed on the day of the Israelites in Egypt, and the spirit of death passed over them, what will you gain if you give your heart to Christ? Death will pass over you. Eternal death will pass over you. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Rather, you have eternal life which is in Christ Jesus. Just coming to church will not get you there if you are not saved. And if 
you are saved, then you go to let others know about Christ. And that's why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Do you want to accept him as your Lord and Savior? Truly. Wherever you are, please ask him to save your life from whatever has been holding you back. Ask him to save you. And this Passover lamb, this Passover lamb of God will take away your sin. Father, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being our Passover. Thank you for saving us. Particularly me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving my family. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Thank you for saving me to serve, to serve you. Thank you for saving us to serve you. Now I know that when God saves a man, He saves that man to serve Him. Are you here? And you want to be saved. Why don't you ask Him to save you? Ask Him to save you so that you can serve Him. You cannot live in sin when you are saved. Rather, you will hate sin. You will turn your back at that wrong way. You will turn your back at some friends that are enemies of the cross. You will put your house in order. Talk to Him and ask Him. Lord, thank you. And thank Him for hearing. Lord, we give you praise. This is how we celebrate the triumphal entry of Christ into Jerusalem. This is how we celebrate His entry into our lives today. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Glad to stand together for